Well, this is more the kind of crowd and kind of dealer level that we're used to seeing at Luke's Town and Country Flea Market in Kentucky. So we're going to have some fun looking around because it looks like there's a lot more stuff today. Hi, I'm George the Antique Nomad. Come with me as I wander the country in search of valuable vintage, amazing antiques, and cool collectibles. We'll buy, sell, and trade at antique malls, shops, and shows, estate sales, flea markets, thrift stores, anywhere people go to find really interesting things that just aren't made anymore. So come on, let's go. Hey everybody, it's George the Antique Nomad, and it's Tuesday morning, and if it's Tuesday morning in Western Kentucky, this is where you'll probably find me. Luke's Town and Country Flea Market. It has been here since 1979. And when the weather's good, there's a lot of dealers who come out and sell all sorts of things. It's a true flea market. There's permanent indoor buildings as well as outdoor vendors. And there could be anything from produce to primitives, antiques to, well, zippers. So we will see what's out here and have some fun. This is a real flea market. So you're gonna see flowers. You're gonna see possibly chickens and and then you're going to see tables with really cool collectible stuff. So that's what we're mainly looking for here. Some furniture over here. It looks like a lot of used goods, but I'm looking for the antiques, so we'll keep on looking. That amber piece of glass, amber is not a color I usually look at, but I think that's a pretty good pattern. Looks like Imperial's Cape Cod, not to be confused with Avon's Cape Cod. But you can tell by the diamond shapes with the circles in it. That was a very popular pattern in the 50s and 60s, usually seen in clear. Auto bus is going to be a 1960s, probably battery, battery operated from Japan, I'm guessing. Maybe just a friction drive, actually. This steamroller is a neat little sit-on-top toy for a kid back in the 50s. I find that a flea market, because people are spread out, especially with social distancing, people are spreading out and not setting up right next to each other. So I do better sometimes when I go to the outer edges. So that's where we're headed now. Well, we're over on the dollar table here, and this is kind of cool because it's Kentucky. I wonder who made it. No mark. It looks like it was a less expensive knockoff. Cabbage Patch Kids Glass probably money in that but the thing I see that I like for a dollar is this it's an old Roland Marcellus plate and they don't sell like they used to but these are actually from about 1900 they were done for tourist attractions all over the place and this is Pittsburgh Pennsylvania made in England for the Kaufman brothers who would have sold it I think the thing I like the best about it is Pittsburgh is misspelled it's missing the H I think I'll take that for a dollar. And here's a place we did a video before, Tell City, Indiana, home of Tell City Furniture and a lot of related. That's got a big crack in it though, so I'm just gonna take the one. All right, let's see what we got going over here. This guy looks like he's got some old stuff. I see a cedar chest and a big wicker bench that looks like it's old. So maybe he's got other old stuff too. The cedar chest is a traditional style, probably 1930s or 40s. Looks like it's in good shape. It's also got a big old bread bowl here. Let's see if this is original. Big old metal churn with a 1910 date. This is Daisy Churn. That would have been a big one for farm use. Then over here we got some tobacco flats. These have the good marks on them with where they came from. Big Burley Warehouse. People are liking these for decoration these days. Got an old needle point here. Somebody went to a lot of trouble to make. Colors are good. Frame looks like probably 1950s or 60s, I'd say, especially with that Chianti bottle. Those were popular back then. A couple of ovals, sort of Hollywood Regency style mirrors. Nice if you needed a pair. 
And then we got this big old wicker set here. That's a nice old set. A couple other things I wanted to show, because they do have some cool stuff in this space. This is an old wagon jack. This would have been for before the cars to lift your wagon off the ground to fix your tire. This is a crazy old thing. Somebody made this ladle out of a coconut. They're asking 10 bucks for that. Never saw one like that before. And then I wanted to show this because Winchester bullets, the older packages are collectible and this one's really different because this is for Alberta's 75th anniversary in 1980. They've got that priced at 100. It's got to be a real scarce production. Well, those folks were looking for 75 a piece on the tobacco flats because they said they're getting expensive enough they can't afford to replace them anymore at that price. And I believe that because they are very popular now. But it was more than I could do. So we're going to take a look at some other stuff now. A couple of things I like here. He said a couple bucks on that trivet with the shells in it with the acrylic. And I like those for Florida, so I'll get those. And then I'm going to check out these owls here. They look like they're chalkware from the 70s, and they are big and owly. Okay, these folks have some old stuff we'll take a look at here. Good old jugs and blue ball jars. This one's a little different. You don't see the lightning brand as much. Used to seeing ball mason, so that one's a little more unusual, and they've got 12 on that, which is fair because it is harder to find. Are we live, man? Are we live? <laughs> oh, you can be. Here's the old brownie with the attachment there. It's Bobby. This is Bobby. Okay, I always love their stuff. I uh, I guess they finally stopped making it. Oh, yeah, there's the mark. Yeah, one now. Yeah, it's too bad. I mean, 200 years, that was a good run. Yeah. Fine pottery. It sure is. Stuff, if it's the right name, it's got quite pricey. That's cool. For eight bucks, I think that's real fair. I'm going to take that. Now, these are nice folks, and they're going to wrap that for me while I show you the rest of their stuff. They've got an old pump here for 60 That's actually a pretty good price these days for the old cast iron. Red Rider Daisy, that's are you on Facebook pretty good. With, with that? I'm on YouTube. I do a show called The Antique Nomad. Yeah, it's fun. I like it. What, if I wanted to watch it, what, what, what would I do? Uh, just go on to YouTube and put in The Antique Nomad, and it'll pop right up. Ah, uh, yes. As he says, this is very interesting. Yeah, Laughing lunchbox. All the catchphrases. That show was full of catchphrases. There's Rowan and Martin and the crew, including Goldie Hawn, Ruth Buzzy, Henry Gibson, a bunch of people who ended up becoming famous in their own right. Well, I got to say, the people here are really nice. And this gal here is someone who has come to my estate sales and gone shopping. She's real busy, so I'm not going to get in her face, but I will show this one thing she's got, which is the old Ashland oil here. These old oil cans are pretty collectible now. And then over here, we've got a trailer full of stuff. There's a nice old wooden foot locker. That's a little short to make a table out of, but sometimes people are putting legs under these or stacking a couple on each other and doing it that way. When I came here before, this guy had this neat collection of crackled glass from various Ohio River companies, so I wanted to show it again. I bought a couple of pieces from him, but I didn't get to actually show him on the computer. That one there with the ruffles, that is Blanco glass. And a lot of people don't recognize that piece because it doesn't look like most of what they made. But that is who did that amber one there. This tall bottle here is a really neat piece with the crackle. Unfortunately, it is missing its stopper, but it's cool. This one is rainbow glass here. And Rainbow Glass ended up being a subsidiary of Viking. This is right about the time Viking bought them in 1959. Before that, they were just a decorating that company. Man down there in a yellow shirt and white Viking hat. wanted yeah. to do hand-blown glass like Blinko, but they wanted to do it with their own stuff instead of um, having other people make for them. So they bought Rainbow to do that part, and then they did the molded pieces in the Viking factory. This little ewer is cool. 
These are all good 60s era pieces. This one with the riggery around the collar here is likely to be pilgrim glass. There's a lot of interest in all the crackle glass. Crackle is made by taking the piece while it's really hot and dunking it in water really fast and then pulling it out so that it fuses back together so the cracks are internal but it doesn't fall apart. This little piece here is definitely pilgrim too. Not all pilgrim is finished this way, but if you look at this piece up close, if I get it in frame, you're going to see a little waffle stamp on the bottom. That's how they would finish off their pontals at one point in the 1960s for a while. And so if you see that finish, it's pilgrim specifically, and that's a pretty bright little color. So I'm going to turn the camera off so that I can talk to this uh, nice fellow. And I bought a few pieces last time, and I think I'll buy a few more. Well, let's see what they've got at this table here. These little candlesticks are Fostoria Century pattern. Century has these sort of curly cues and then the little almost like waveforms coming off of it. And they did a whole set of tableware. That was in the 50s. It was a little simpler than some of their etch glass from the 40s had been. And people really liked it at the time. It's pretty collectible now. The world's tiniest Shen Shen table from the 70s. I'm not sure why they made them so small, but it'd be cute for a little display stand. There's a Pepsi Cola. I keep talking about one dot and two dot. Here's the two dot. This was up until the 50s. There were two dots between Pepsi and Cola. Then they simplified it to one. So this is going to be from about 1950. It's kind of rough. It's had a hole put in it. Probably was tacked on a wall at some point. But it's just nice to be able to show you that. And it's got the enjoy Pepsi Cola hits the spot. And they have the musical notes because on the radio ads, they'd have a bunch of singers singing that. And then this big blue opalescent bowl is Fenton glass, I think from the 1980s. A couple of cute little elf pieces here. And then I'll pull out and show this. This is enamelware. This is a cuspidor. And this one's made in Czechoslovakia, it says. Looks like about 1930s from the color. I have not yet joined the legions of Kentucky dwellers who have riding lawnmowers, but my storage house has such a big yard that I might be next. They don't call it the bluegrass state for nothing. There is grass all over and corn. Anything that is grass related grows really well here. A little too well for my liking. A lot of pocket knives. I find that the people who sell the pocket knives and weapons at these shows, they know their stuff. It's a good place to buy this kind of thing, but it's not a good place to buy for resale. But I see an old camel cigarette sign here that I like, so I'm going to go take a look at this fella. Here's a good railroad lock and key set. It's got L and N railroad on the back, and it's got the embossed on the front telling you to get the key out, close the lock, because that way you wouldn't lose the key. That's a good set. They've got a hundred and a quarter on that, but that's a nice old one, so it is worth the price. And they've got a good selection of cast iron here too. I wanted to show this one especially. 1892 patent on this waffle iron by Wagner. That's a really early piece for them. And those are good. And then next to this, the mailbox is Griswold. That's a good piece. And you can tell from the front just by that little circle with the cross through it, because that was their logo. And then behind that, the lamb, it's Griswold. You can see the large Griswold patent circle here and the small one here. They've done a nice job fixing and oiling up all this stuff. Here's the Griswold version of the waffle iron and the scotch bowl. They've got some unusual hard to find pieces here. The Wagner drip roaster. I mean these are all the better things that you don't see so often in cast iron. You see lots of frying pans but they've got some good stuff. You always see coin dealers at swap meets too, and it's another thing where they usually know their stuff, but you can get some really cool things. Here's some early Liberty V nickels, 1880s or when they came out with that design. So that's pretty neat. Texaco reminder tags for the old cars. If you're restoring an old car, those are handy because then you can put the right 
period slip inside that Texaco logo would have been the 1960s. He's also got stamps here and here's an interesting one right off the top. It's George Washington but it's internal revenue inland exchange so this would have been a war revenue stamp probably first world war if I remember right. In fact, it looks like he's got a bunch of revenue stamps here. This is sort of a specialized area of stamp collecting. It's not the usual stuff. These were things that were used mainly for tax purposes on documents, stamps. There were a whole bunch of different kinds of ones that they did. So while I'm thinking of it, please comment in the space below here and also hit the thumbs up button to like this video. If you haven't subscribed, click the subscribe button below. Also, hit the bell below to be notified of new videos coming every Monday and Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern. And thank you so much for following along. Let's go back to this video. These folks put out a big display. This swap meet happens every Tuesday. So this is a lot of work. They had to be up really early to get this all done. Here's something I really like. This is a 50s era, 60s era thing that we see these dioramas inside frames might even be a little earlier and they're usually western scenes like this mountains and cactus I see these out west more than I do here paper mache back and it says on the back that it was made in Arizona you got the old highway signs and a lot of tools but I'm going to ask about this thing because I really do like this Arizona piece here this booth here's got some interesting little small stuff in the case. Good morning. Good morning. They've got these cute penny toys. These are little plastic trains and stuff. They were a penny when they were new. They're definitely not a penny now. I, I was just putting a, gonna put a thing over it because that's gonna melt, you know? Uh, yeah, I understand. I'll stand in the... Oh, well, thank you. I'm uh, doing a little video. I go by the Antique Nomad on YouTube. I like to show people meets and places they haven't been before to get them excited and interested in what we're doing. Uh, but I know what you mean. The plastic does like to melt in this heat, so I'll move out of the way and let you cover it. Um, I've got lots of stuff. Some people tell me that I have a lot of oddities. Have fun little things. That's what I like, too. Uh, and a little advertisement stuff. I like that. Me, too. See, that's this, the plastic song thing I was going to yeah, those, those, uh, the old uh, railroad cars and something like that, they're really old. Yeah, yeah, I, they were a little before my time, but I remember seeing them, older kids had them when I was a kid. Well, I'm going to get these two little pieces here, and the, this is Eisenhower, this is because we were mm -hmm. trying to make sure that uh, the communists didn't get us then, <laughs> and then the uh, wooden spoon there I just think is really cute. You don't see the spoons very no, often. They're, they're and hard to get, especially that good shape. Yeah, I thought so too, and you were very generous, so I'll take them. Thank you. This still works. You know what it is? Oh, he's, uh, they flip around, or do they? On the trapeze. On the trapeze, that's and right. And a winder, and he'll, if you hold him just right, he'll still. He'll still flip around. Oh, that's cool. And then I even collect a lot of stuff like, they come out of an old car. And it's a, a, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's like the choke, I think, or choke something like that. that. Yep. I would just put that stuff in there. You know, I just think it's fun because somebody thinks all this is interesting. I sure do. And just little stuff is just a lot of fun to spend time looking at. Oh, an old Mickey. 1930 Mickey Mouse. Oh, wow. That's an early one. Yeah, in the rubber. Uh-huh. Very neat. And then I see you've got some jewelry, too. Wow, you've got a selection. I like it. And I got to just odds and ends, stuff like that. Oh, yeah. I like the little alligator dexterity game there little pin backs and things and that's ink and that's um that was sturdy boy but wafers it's, but it's gone out of it whatever was in it was gone and i had it in there at one time ah oh, that's really fun thank you well if you get real hot they have a little snack bar here and if you get really hot then it might be time to go inside. And we're getting to about that point, but I think I've got one more little spot here that I missed. So I'm gonna walk up here and then we're gonna hit some of the inside buildings. This is Hoghead Shed. This is a scary pile, but you know, there's stuff in scary piles sometimes. Look at that Afghan, that is not bad, good colors. That, that was when silver peaked out. If you need a big old galvanized bin, which could make a good coffee table or something else. 
And then, oh, there's fishing poles, an old bed frame, and a lot of desiccated tires and tools. But then underneath, there's a kind of neat boat from the 1960s, a little John boat, so you never know what you'll find. These folks here have a nice little 1920s lamp table with the turned sides that I thought would be worth showing. These folks look like they've got a mix of practical and collectible, so let's see what the collectibles look like. These plastic tanks were kids' toys from China, so not real old, but they're priced like it, so that's fair enough. But not what I look for. They do have some old Tonkas here. The old snorkel truck. Somebody is in love with that fire truck. Great fire truck, huh? <laughs> and then this is Avon Cape Cod. We're going to take a look at the bottom of this guy because some of these designers are pretty desirable now. But this one doesn't have a name on it. So, don't know who made that one. Stormtrooper mug is earlier. Longa Burger baskets are starting to get picked up because I understand they have gone out of business. And then if you want to open your own Dairy Queen or just have a really cool huge sign to hang in your man cave or garage, on special for 500 that's actually a good price, it's just so huge. Here's a neat set. This is an old shoe shine set. So you've got the old wire chair with the footrest. The vinyl seat has been replaced and they've really done the arms, re-polished them, but you've got the original shoe shine, the original shoe shine stand with it. Say that fast. Really neat, probably 19 teens or 20s. This fellow's got neat stuff. He's got great old advertising. I, didn't get to show this the last time, so I wanted to come in and show now. Old Dr. Pepper clock, priced at $2.75. Dr. Pepper is hard to find compared to the other sodas, and a lot of people like it, and he's also got the old cooler there. So that's pretty neat. Coke bottles. The bottles are local, and from a small place, Central City, where the Everly Brothers are from, and so that's going to make them local interest and more valuable here. He's got a lot of these old advertising clocks for beer and soda from the 40s and 50s. Advertising is a specialty of his, obviously. Pepsi chalkboard is going to be after 1973 when they changed the logo to the modern logo that we're used to now. This Lance case is priced at $275, but the neat thing about it, again, and for a dealer, is that it's great for display. You can take them to shows. You can use them in mall booths. Let's see what else he's got here. Upside down here is the old Roseville Zephyr Lily hanging pot. I remember when these went for a small fortune because the hanging pots really were not as common. They'd be hung on chains. That's why the hole's in the side. And Zephyr Lily is one of the most desirable patterns. Don't know what his price on that today is. At one time that would have sold for 175 to two and a quarter, but I believe these days it's probably more in the 125 range. Here's a neat Henry Tromner scale. This is an interesting thing. This is called a lava bow. That's where you have a font over a basin. They were hung in gardens on walls. People would actually use them at one point to draw water. Mostly they're decorative now, but this one is going to be quite old. You can see the chips and the enameling, but this will date to sometime around 1880 to 1890. He's got it for 150, which is not really a bad price. Even though it's a little beaten up, it's got the big board to hang it on, so it'd be a fun display. It's a very narrow room here, so I can't really get back and show you as much as I'd like to. And there's a really good screen door with the arch top. 
He's also got some really good Crocs, and one that I really like in particular is this one because it was just a utility Croc. Not many people would have thought to save these, but it's got incised in it H and L W Baker Company, 205 Church Street, Nashville, Tennessee, and that's going to make that really of interest to people collecting in this part of the country. People like things from closer to where they're from. It also is going to be something, you know, Nashville was not a very big town. There wouldn't be a whole lot of these left. They were just made for utility, and then a lot of them were destroyed during Prohibition, and so not so easy to find. This one's really fun, too, because somebody didn't have their cork, so they stuck a corn cob in it as a cork. That is just really cool. Anything that really shows its use that reflects country and pioneer and primitive life Primitive by our standards, that is. That is what the people who collect primitives and country decor that's real really are after. So this is a nice little collection of jugs. Then he's got a bunch of old stock candy bar boxes from the 60s and 70s. And then in this case here, a bunch of Fall City beer patches. So this is a fun shed. There's several sheds that have interesting stuff. Behind it I want to show this also. He's got this old screen. This would have been a screen door from a country store because it's advertising Sunbeam Bread. Here's one more advertising screen door and these are original with the screen print in it. Colonial is good bread. Hard to find these. Most of these were taken off of the old stores years ago or have rotted and fallen away. People will buy these and use them on old houses as part of restoration now, and they usually sell for a few hundred each. Here's a nice old yoke, and it's $30, which is not a bad price when it's got the hoops, because people like to put these up. I've seen them use them to hang lights in places and suspend them from the ceiling. I've seen them used as pot racks. I've seen them used to hold plants. A lot of people are finding different reasons for these. Not too many people are running a team of two oxen anymore. Well, I'm sad that this place isn't open. It's missing a few shades, but I really like this floor lamp. That's that kind of modernist thing that sometimes is lurking in places like this where people don't really care about it, but boy, if I clean that up, hmm, well, maybe next time. And of course, this is a real flea market, so you're gonna see lots of things like socks and underwear and newer Barbie dolls, although they're pretty and people like them too. Here is a fleet of old Hot Wheels cars and related. And I'm sure that there's a few sleepers in here if you knew what you were looking for. I know this one's a little older, but those mag wheels are a clue that it's probably 1990s. And what I'm looking for are things from the late 60s, early 70s. I don't see those in this particular batch. But there's a lot of collectors for these. And these are newer Barbies. Lots and lots of newer Barbies. This fella's got some signage. I bought some things from him the last time I was here. He said he was going to get some new stuff, so we're going to take a look. Old Thunderbird hubcaps look like they're from the 70s models. Farrah Fawcett used to advertise those. Okay, let's see what is new here. This is a plain Ohio thermometer, late 70s, people like those. There's the Ellie Smith bittersweet ashtray, don't see those too much. I like that little mirror with the shaped frame and the beveling, that looks like 1920s. Greetings. Uncle Sam's greetings were not welcomed by a lot of folks because that meant you were being drafted into the military. I haven't actually seen one of these books before. And here it says this is 1952, so this is Korean War. The day has come. Maybe you like the idea and maybe you don't. Many guys don't like the idea of going into the service. Well, you know. 
It was wartime and it was not optional, so there are your choices of uniforms depending on your rank. Lots of good illustrations in here. The new friends you will make. And why you must not go AWOL. I think they were having some problems with that back then. Even more during Vietnam. This has 1870s and 80s patent dates. And this would have been to crimp It seems to have all its pieces. It can open up. The idea was you could crimp your sleeves. The Victorian women wanted to have crimped sleeves on dresses, and this was a way to do it. It's got all of the different things so that you can hang it at various angles so it's complete. And that's kind of a neat looking item. I'm going to have to see what the price is on that. It was by a company called Penn, as you can see there. Big old heavy cast iron thing. It's amazing those tiny little women, people were a lot smaller then, had to heft around these big heavy objects to do, just to do simple household chores. Thanks for joining me again in the fun and fascinating antique community here where online meets the real world. Please click the subscribe button below. Click the bell to be notified when new videos upload. Leave a comment below and hit thumbs up to like this video. Links to our online social media daily posts and our items for sale are in the description. This is George at The Antique Nomad. Bye for now!